The Russians are building fortifications, digging ditches, and developing special hydrotechnical facilities in the Belgorod region. This was reported by the spokesman of the Kharkiv Group of the Ukrainian Army, Vitaly Serentsev. This can be considered as a bookmark for the future. This is a calculated preparation for a sharp change in the situation, and in this case to blow up the dams and slow down the progress of the Ukrainian forces, the spokesman said. He said that the Russians are not only actively building defensive fortifications around Belgorod, but are also actively mining general and special purpose waterworks. According to him, this can be regarded as a bookmark for the future, if, for example, the situation changes dramatically and the Russians have to blow up dams to slow down the advance of the Ukrainian defense forces, or we can assume that Russia is preparing provocations at hydraulic structures in order to further accuse Ukraine of environmental and humanitarian consequences. The Ukrainian army has already managed to capture a part of the Russian territory. We are talking about the territories of the Kursk region. This is the first foreign military intervention in Russian territory since the Second World War. Belgorod, the capital of the eponymous region, occupies a strategic place in the continuing Russia-Ukraine conflict. A mere 40 kilometers from the Ukrainian border, Belgorod served as a base for Russia's invasion since February 2022, making it a target for Ukrainian counterattacks. It has been repeatedly pummeled by artillery barrages and drone strikes that have increased in intensity, according to residents. Recall, last month Russia has begun evacuations in the Belgorod region as it eyes rising military activity across the border in Ukraine. The governor of Belgorod announced that he had ordered civilians in one district of the region to head for safety. Russian forces are battling an Ukrainian offensive in the neighboring Kursk region. The enemy is active on the border of the Krasnoyarsky district, Vyacheslav Gladkov warned. For the health and security of our population, we're beginning to move people who live in Krasnoyarsky to safer places, he said. I am sure that our servicemen will do everything to cope with the threat that has arisen. It was unclear from Gladkov's statement how many Russian residents have been evacuated so far in Belgorod, which has regularly come under fire from Ukrainian missiles and drones in recent months. Russian authorities announced that the entry to six settlements in the Belgorod region bordering Ukraine are closed. The settlements are located close to the Kursk region, where the Russian-Ukrainian fighting has continued since August 6. The Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region have a new strategy to move quickly and encircle Russian troops. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, when Ukrainian troops breached Russian defenses at a new section of the Russian-Ukrainian border near the village of Noviput last week, it shocked many, but now their purpose is becoming clearer. A Ukrainian tactical group apparently led by the 95th Air Assault Brigade is cutting off the right as it advances beyond Noviput and through the southern quarters of the nearest Russian town, Veseloy. In other words, Ukrainian forces are turning towards the main Kursk salient. If the Ukrainians advancing northeast from Noviput can link up with the Ukrainians in the main sector, they will cut off potentially thousands of Russians between themselves and the border. The analyst writes, as the analyst points out, local geographic conditions favor the Ukrainian armed forces' attempts to encircle Russian forces. The Seam River forms a natural border along most of the northern edge of a potential pocket bordered on the left and right flanks by advancing Ukrainian forces. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed all permanent bridges across the Seam in this area, so all Russian troops south of the Seam, and there may be entire battalions of them there, depend on temporary pontoon bridges or a narrow land bridge across the town of Koronevo. It is for this reason that the Ukrainians have been relentlessly shelling the pontoons as soon as the Russians have erected them. It is also for this reason that Ukrainian troops are advancing in Koronevo, clearly intending to destroy the land bridge, the analyst notes. Moreover, David Axe points out the balance of power in Kursk could also affect the Ukrainians' chances of success in a potential encirclement. He estimates that Kyiv has committed about 10,000 troops to a two-pronged invasion of Kursk. Moscow may have sent 38,000 troops to the region, but many of them are poorly trained young conscripts. 
Ukrainian troops have liberated two more settlements in the Kursk region. In particular, the Ukrainian armed forces have occupied the villages of Durovka and Vetryanoi, as well as part of the settlement of Zuravli. In addition, the Russian group is surrounded in Kremenoi. Last week, the Ukrainian armed forces broke through the Russian border at a new point in the Kursk region. Ukrainian forces reached the village of Veseloi and practically took it under their control. As Forbes wrote, the Russian garrison around Vesologo includes a large number of poorly trained young conscripts, and this is probably what led to the rapid advance of the Ukrainian armed forces in this direction.